um, last Saturday after the radio station. Um, all right, it starts out the complicit media. I think freedom of the press is, a, is an essential, necessary part of democracy. But yesterday I witnessed our local press conduct an interview with my husband that could be better described as a hostile cross-examination. John Barry of the Poughkeepsie Journal called Joel in the early afternoon inquiring about his response to the censor resolution. Joel responded by saying that yes, perhaps he could have chosen his words with more care, but he had the right to call out illegal policies when he sees them. It was quite obvious from the onset that wasn't the answer Mr. Barry was looking for. He repeatedly berated Joel, asking him, is it accurate to say and then basically inserted his own words, calling it paraphrasing, completely misconstruing and twisting Joel's comments in an obvious attempt to feed the GOP's established narrative that my husband is an unreasonable, unreasonable cantankerous hothead who shoots his mouth off without cause. Over and over, Joel tried to lay out his argument that the county's takeover of the city's bus system is nothing more than a legal, immoral privatization of the city's resources that will leave many people stranded without necessary access to decent public transportation. And over and over again, Mr. Barry interrupted him, not allowing him to explain why he feels so passionate about the issue. Is it accurate to say that you refuse to apologize? The reporter hammered. All at once, it became gl glaringly obvious to me that the reporter, and perhaps other media outlets, didn't want the truth. In fact, he flat out refused to accurately quote my husband's preferred comments, arguing there was no proof that this takeover is illegal. Joel then directed him to a litter, letter written by, the prestigious law, by a prestigious law firm stating that this was a clear violation of Title VI of the 1964 Civil Rights Act. Act. Mr. Berry refused to accept this. Is it accurate reporting if a person is interrogated to the point of exhaustion, in the end finally relenting to the reporter's narrative? Hold on. Is it accurate reporting if somebody's words are repeatedly misquoted and cut short? Today I read Mr. Barry's article about this subject, and to be honest, I wasn't sure it was about the same interview I witnessed. Yeah, it was that bad. All right. And um, let me go ahead and read my letter to the editor um, on the censure. Okay. This was printed in what? the Where was this printed? Uh, Daily Freeman, Daily I think Freeman. On, on Monday, maybe. And I, I believe it was Northern Duchess News as well, right? Okay. The, Republic, the, the Republicans' hypocrisy was on full display on Thursday night at the Duchess County Legislature's Government and Services and Administration Committee meeting. They voted to censure my husband for a comment he made in defense of our most vulnerable citizens, poor people, people of color, and the disabled people who have been disenfranchised dis disproportionately by the privatization of the city of Poughkeepsie's bus system. He has admitted on many occasions that perhaps he could have worded his statements differently, but the GOP is determined to use this instance to score cheap political points and to try to silence the man that has been a thorn in their side for decades. My question is this. Where was the censure resolution when county legislator jo Joseph Incarnado suggested that women who don't want to be raped should dress more appropriately after a presentation on sexual abuse with sexual assault was made to the Public Safety Committee on June 9th of last year? Where was their vote to censure when county legislator Michael Kelsey was justifiably accused and later convicted of sexually assaulting two Boy Scouts? Where was their outrage when County Comptroller Jim Coughlin tweeted comparing an African-American woman to a dirty ape for suggesting that it takes a village to raise a child? I want to note there that he refused to apologize for that statement. And where is their strong sense of morality when they repeatedly take legalized kickbacks in the form of campaign contributions in exchange for lucrative county contracts? And finally, where is their shame when Trump, the man on top of their ticket, viciously attacks different ethnic groups, women, reporters, judges, people of color, Muslims, and anyone who might dare disagree with him? You know, they can pretend this is about honor and decency, but it's abundantly clear to anyone that's paying attention that this is nothing more than a character assassination and a sleazy attempt to use public resources to destroy their top political threat. There you go there. Um, can I read the other one? Please. Right. What's the what's the what's the website that you're reading from? Oh, okay. This is um this is Layla Cohentiner at blogspot.com. All right, hold on, let me let me find it over here. All right. Oh it's up here. Okay. 
and this one is called the New House on Un-American Activities Committee. What I witnessed in yesterday's county legislator meeting amounted to no less than a political lynching. During the McCarthy era, my grandfather, Milt Cohen, was blacklisted for being an outspoken liberal by the House, of Un House on Un-American Activities Committee. The similarities of his experience and what is happening to my husband are chilling to say the least. Let me lay out some facts. Number one, Joel is the hardest working member of the legislature. Not my opinion, facts. Month after month, he is the only one circulating letters, researching new ideas, ideas putting forth new resolutions, and challenging GOP legislation. Two, the other Democrats are just about spineless. They have been beaten down by the threat of retaliation if they dare challenge the GOP agenda. They have lost their moral compass, or at the very least, their tenacity. My husband is the only one willing to stand up to the GOP power structure in the legislature. Three, Joel is the only legislator calling out the illegality and immorality of the county's cruel privatization of the city of Poughkeepsie's bus system. This is a clear violation of Title VI of the 1964 Civil Rights Act. While bus routes in the white areas of Poughkeepsie remain unchanged and even expanded, the routes in in the area where African Americans reside have been cut and in some cases eliminated. A strong letter was written by the prestigious law firm Hogan Lovells expressing their strong opposition and it lays out the case clearly and precisely. The notion that the county is saving the city from a bus system in the red is categorically false. The city's bus system has drawn an annual profit of $10,000. Not a fortune but a far cry from being a financial burden. People have been coming out in droves for years begging the Common Council and the legislature not to follow through with this, but instead of letting them have their promised vote on the issue, Molinaire and Wallison signed a backroom deal obviating democracy and betraying their constituents. And I want to remind everybody that those constituents in the black areas are, are most likely not Republican voters. All right, hold on. Um, Joel is alone in, number four, Joel is alone in defending our progressive values, but when it suits them, the Dem Democrats will not only co-opt idea, his ideas, but give him zero credit. An example just happened recently when he brought up pushing the GOP on pay to play and putting forth legislation on ending the practice. Um, the Dutchess County Republican Committee in Molinero received $151,000 from the same 23, fir 23 firms who got $55 million in county contracts over the last six years. He was flat out told no by his colleagues, but when former Republican, now Independence Party legislator Coviello got on board, they changed their tune and put out a press release claiming the idea is their own. Joel's name was mentioned only briefly at the very bottom, and the fact that they used his and my research wasn't even mentioned. Everyone, number five, everyone, both Republicans and Democrats, resent his willingness to call them out. They resent his tireless dedication to his constituents. They resent him for keeping them late on the legislative floor. They resent him for delving into every detail and making certain that you, the taxpayer, are well represented and informed. They resent him because he makes the rest of them look bad. Hold on. In conclusion, this censure vote was a way to punish him for being their political foe. This is their payback for not, for, for not playing by the rules. This is their retrib retribution for not following along blindly and rubber stamping their cruel agenda. The House on Un-American Activities Committee and the, in the, of the 1960s and the Dutchess County Legislature have, have, of today have a lot in common indeed. And there you go there. That's it. Uh, let me just ask you, the, uh, when you had a letter to the editor in about a month ago, what did you notice that they would not, that okay, they refused yeah. to print? Yeah. Um, so I wrote uh, I wrote uh, editorial to the Poughkeepsie Journal, and in it um, I, uh, I I was basically laying out the facts of uh, of, of of what's happening, and um, and they omitted the line that uh, that talked about how the bus system um, the takeover of the city's bus system is illegal. Um, I found that very interesting. And then last Saturday when he was interviewing you or interrogating you more like it um he kept saying oh no it's it's not illegal it's not illegal where's the proof where's the proof and no matter what proof you offered him he just would not accept it because